Kia ora year 12 and 13, here's a new scholarship calculus video. This is a pretty awful question from the 2008 paper. It's question 4C. So you probably, if you've done a few of these by now, know that if it's at the end of a question, it's probably worse than if it's at the start. And it is. So this is what we've got. We have to find the condition for g of x to be exactly divisible by x minus 1 for this function here. We're just told that a, b and c are constants, and g of x is obviously a quarter, so it's going to be some kind of upside down thing. Um, but that's only the first bit, but that's a good straightforward first bit for one mark out of three. Right, and then the last two marks are down here, so it's a three mark part of an eight mark question. Hence or otherwise, fully factorise g of x and find all solutions of the equation this. So we're going to use whatever condition we get from here in this if it's applicable. What I want you to do now is to jot down all of the big ideas from level 3 in scholarship that are going to help you with this question. The first one I've already said, that's the factor theorem. second one relates to this. Okay, so here's what I got. This is what I ended up using. Um, it's obvious that we're going to need the factor theorem, and we're also going to use the fundamental theorem of algebra. Now the fundamental theorem of algebra tells us that we're going to end up with four solutions to that equation because the highest power is 4, right? So that's useful. And then we're going to end up um, taking this factor of x minus 1 and then trying to factorise the rest. So two things that often crop up in questions like this that you'll remember um, are either the method of matching up the coefficients or polynomial long division. I'm going to do a little bit of both in this video. I should have warned you, it's going to be quite a long video, and it's going to be, I'm going to go pretty slowly. I'm also using um, a beautiful new microphone that Isaac has given me, so please could somebody leave me a comment and tell me if the sound quality is better than usual or just as bad as ever. Right, so let's get started. Um, find the condition for this to be exactly divisible by x minus 1. Well, so by the factor theorem, if x minus 1 is a factor, which is what exactly divisible is all about, then we have g of 1 is equal to 0. So we can substitute in x equals 1, and this is what we get, negative 2 minus a to the power of 4 plus b plus c equals 0. So the first thing I can do is I can rewrite that in some way. Now the first thing I tried to do was a bit go nowhere-ish and I got this and I puzzled over that for a while. So but that's fine, that's your condition, that's one way to write it. The other slightly cleaner way to write it is to say well if this um, quartic in this form here is going to have x minus 1 as a factor, then we can also say that b plus c must equal 2 minus a to the power of 4. So that's probably the most elegant way to write that condition. Now that's your lead-in to the second part of the question, which is to solve a particular quartic equation, and it's this one here. Right, A lot of colours on the slide today. So what we have to do in order to um, say that x minus 1 is a factor, we've got to check that the condition here holds. So we're going to go back up here, and we're going to say, well, what's a? Well, a down here is 1. b is going to be 8, and c is going to be negative 7. So let's write those out. So a is equal to 1, b is equal to 8, and c is equal to negative 7. We'll put another little box around those. What I have to do next is to check that the condition holds. So b plus c is equal to 8 take away 7, which is 1. So that's my left-hand side. Now I'm going to check the right-hand side. So I'm checking this condition here. 2 minus a to the power of 4 is equal to 2 minus 1 to the power of 4, which is 1, which equals my left-hand side, 
so we can do a little smiley face not in the scholarship exam please um, it's very serious uh, so the condition is met or condition satisfied so because the condition is satisfied we know that x minus 1 is a factor of this particular case it's a factor of negative well, this polynomial, where are we? Negative 2x minus 1 to the power of 4 plus 8x minus 7. And we're going to call this p of x. Or we could call it g of x, I guess. Right, so now comes a little bit of just hard guts it through work. We know that it's aquatic, so we know it's going to have four solutions, and we've found our first one. So we now want to rewrite it as follows. This is the thing that we're trying to solve. x minus 1 is a factor. So what do we know about the rest of it? Well, this is a linear factor, so this bit in here must be a cubic. Now I'm going to write that as a general cubic. And I'm going to use A, B, C, D. It doesn't matter what you use. Don't confuse this A with the earlier A. Right, so there we go. There's my general cubic. Right, now suppose you just got that question in level 3 or A level. What would you do next? Because that's all we have to do here. Well, there's two ways to go. Um, we need to match up coefficients. The trouble with this left hand side is that we haven't cleaned it up enough yet. So this is where your binomial expansion is going to come in. We need to expand out this thing here without mucking it up. So let's just revise general binomial expansions. We've got ax plus b to the power of 4. So that will be 4 choose 0 times ax to the 4. 4 choose 1 ax cubed times b 4 choose 2, ax squared, b squared, and we've got two little terms left to go. 4 choose 3, ax times b cubed. And if you're not familiar with that, go watch one of the A-level videos on the binomial theorem, or look in your delta book. So we need to um, apply that to this. Remember that these numbers just come out of Pascal's triangle, so they're the fourth row of Pascal's triangle. Right, so first I'm going to expand 2x minus 1 to the power of 4. Um, I'll deal with the negative later. So 2x minus 1 to the power of 4 goes like this. It's going to be um, 2x to the power of 4 plus 4 times this. plus 6 plus 4 times 2x to the power of 1 negative 1 cubed plus negative 1 to the power of 4 right so messy but not difficult and it's a matter of keeping your wits about you when you get this far through the problem right remember you've got a fair bit of time to um, do this and I think this is slightly on the long side for just part of a question but all we're trying to do now is we've got that first factor we've got to figure out what this cubic is and to do that we have to expand this first right so that's why we're doing it so when we clean that up um, here's what we get 16x to the 4 minus 32x cubed plus 24x squared minus 8x plus 1. Now up here our left hand side is this. We've got negative 2x minus 1 to the 4 plus 8x minus 7. So we can now simplify that as negative of the expansion we just did. And we're going to add on the 8x minus 7 on the end so that's the two changes we've made there so more cleanup so much of maths is cleaning things up right there we go 
So 32x cubed minus 24x squared plus 16x minus 8. Now that's looking nice because I can see a factor of 8 coming out there. So that's all good. Right, so finally we're going to rewrite it. And then we're going to be able to do some matchups. I can just about hear you groaning down my laptop at how tedious this problem is. Please direct any feedback to the comments. Right, so that's the first bit done. Um, so what do we know? Well, we know that this has got a factor, because the conditions meet, of x minus 1 times my general cubic term. Now we're going to start to match. Right, so what have we got? Well, we've got um, the x4 term. Negative 16, which is the coefficient coming out here, has got to come from this one times this one. So that's really easy. All right, so we're matching up coefficients, and we're going to get a directly. So that's good. That one's done. Let's work on the constant now. Negative 8, right? So do the two easiest ones first. Negative 8 is equal to negative d. So d is equal to 8. Right, we've got b and c left to do. Um, I'm not going to work with the squared term because I want to save myself a little bit of work. We're going to work with the cubic term. So where does that come from? Well, 32. I'll just put some notes. So the x cubed term gives me 32 is equal to negative a plus b. That's a plus there. All right. Again, if this is too fast, go back and do some factor theorem work out of delta. And we know that a was equal to negative 16. So negative a is 16, giving us b is equal to 16. And the last one that we're going to work with is we'll get the x term, or the x coefficient. Right, so the coefficient on the left-hand side is 16. That has to match from over here x times d minus x times c. So we get 16 is equal to d minus c which is 8 minus c, so c is equal to negative 8. So the problem is starting to collapse around us. This should be starting to feel quite good. We can now take the a, b, and c and write it as follows. So we started with this, negative 2x minus 1 to the 4, plus 8x minus 7 equals 0. And we can now say that that's equivalent to x minus 1, times negative, where are we, negative 16 x cubed plus 16 x squared minus 8 x plus 8 equals 0. This is a cubic, we've got to get three solutions out of that. So negative 16 x cubed plus 16 x squared minus 8 x plus 8 equals 0. Let's divide through by negative 8. And we get 2x cubed minus 2x squared plus 8x minus 8. What, what am I doing? I've forgotten. Plus 1. What have I done? Plus x minus 1 equals 0. Right, let's take a look at that. And we're going to call that thing q of x. Uh, let's try factor theorem on it again. Just look at the numbers. We've got 2 and a 2 and a something and nothing and a 1. So try q of 1 is 2 minus 2 plus 1 minus 1, which is equal 0. So that's a big smiley face because we've just found that x minus 1 is a factor. Right, now I've only got 30 seconds left here. So I'm going to um, not do the last bit of this. I'm just going to tell you where you get to because the hard work is done. So we can now go... Um, We've got x minus 1 as a factor. How can we pull out the other two factors? And you can either do it using matching coefficients again, or you can do polynomial long division. Right, so 2x cubed minus 2x squared plus x minus 1. And the answers you end up with are 1 over root 2i 
or negative 1 over root 2i. That's all. Talk to you later.